Many times at Learn Electrics, we are asked to explain the reasons for different types of MCBs. Why do we have Type B, Type C and Type D? And what are those funny graphs in the back of the wiring regulations book? In this video, we will look briefly at what an MCB is, what types there are, what formats there are, and those all-important inrush current and response graphs. What is the primary function of an MCB then? It is to protect the cables downstream of the device and to protect persons, livestock and property from the dangers of electricity. An MCB is not there primarily to protect the appliances. Proper selection of the rating and type of an MCB is essential as incorrect choices may give rise to incorrect function during a fault. What formats do MCBs come in? What kinds can you get? We should all be familiar with the single pole MCB or miniature circuit breaker. These devices switch the phase or line conductor only and are used on single phase circuits. All MCBs will give three types of protection. Overload protection, short circuit protection and earth fault protection. We can move on to double pole MCBs. These have a protection for the phase and the neutral in a single phase circuit. As an example, they are installed in caravans and are used in all domestic circuits in many European countries. We can see the symbols for both poles being protected on this close-up of a double pole MCB. Look at these two similar symbols. On the left, both poles have an X in line 1 or 3, indicating that both are protected. An overcurrent in either the phase or the neutral will cause the device to operate. On the right, the protection symbol is only in line 1. Line 3, therefore, is switching only with no protection. The two switches are linked, so they both turn off at the same time, which means that, with a properly built circuit, if line 1, the phase side, opens, then the neutral side, line 2, also opens. Then we have three-pole or triple-pole MCBs for use in three-phase circuits. All three poles are linked, so if one pole detects a problem, then all three turn off together. Moving on, we can have three pole plus neutral, using the abbreviations TPN or 3P plus N. With this type of MCB, all four contacts are linked and operate at the same time. But there is no sensing, no protection in the neutral side. It is just a basic switch. And we can then progress to a four pole MCB. Now there is protection built into all three phases and into the neutral. These are used where there is a likelihood of high neutral currents such as instances where there are excessive unbalanced loads. How then does an MCB sense a problem? What causes it to trip? An MCB is basically a thermomagnetic switch. Both functions are built into the same MCB. We have thermal sensing for slowly rising overloads and we also have electromagnetic sensing for short circuits and earth faults. The rating and the type designation will determine what the actual tripping current and tripping times of the device actually are. The thermal sensing part is basically a bimetallic strip that slowly heats up if it is overloaded. In an MCB this will usually be overloads of current of long duration in other words, several minutes. The bimetallic strip will slowly distort during an overload until it reaches a point where it opens the contacts and disconnects the supply. How quickly it distorts depends on the breaker rating and the overload current. A good example of a bimetallic strip in operation is the switch in your kettle. As the water heats up, the bimetallic strip in the switch starts to bend and when the water boils, it distorts enough to open the contacts and turn the power off. Let's have a little example. A 32 amp Type B breaker protects a socket ring circuit in an office in the middle of winter. It's cold in the office and we end up with four 13 amp heaters all plugged into the same circuit at the same time, giving a total load of 52 amps on the 32 amp breaker. This overload condition 
would cause the bimetallic strip to start heating up and bending. After about 15 minutes, the bimetallic strip reaches a point where it will open the contact and disconnect the supply. Note with overloads that if the overload is removed before the device trips, the bimetallic strip will gradually cool down and return to a normal state. The electromagnetic part of the MCB will operate on excessive and rapidly rising currents that are typical of short circuits and earth faults, a sudden rise of hundreds of amps. A sensing coil will monitor the current flowing through the MCB in normal conditions. The coil has a magnetic armature in the centre and this is connected to a hammer. In no fault conditions, the armature and the hammer are retracted. When a fault occurs, a massive current flows very quickly. This causes the sensing coil to generate a magnetic field that shoots the armature through the coil. The hammer is fired out and strikes the movable contact that opens and breaks the circuit. When the circuit breaks, the supply is disconnected. All MCBs will latch into the off position, the disconnected position, when they sense overloads or faults. They will not auto reset. We must physically reset them ourselves when we've cleared the fault. We can look now at the response curves for MCBs. Different ratings and different types of MCB will respond in their own preset way to different overloads and fault currents. Looking at page 370 of the wiring regulations, we find the response curves for type B MCBs and RCBOs. Each type of MCB and even a fuse will have its own page in the book and each page will show the curves for different breakers and fuse ratings. With the type B shown here, the range is from 6 amps to 125 amps. Time in seconds is shown vertically on the left hand side and the current is shown flowing along the horizontal axis. Note that the numbers are all shown as logarithmic scales. Logarithmic just means that the numbers go up in blocks to the power of 10. The first block is the numbers 1 to 10, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. The second block covers the range 10 to 100 and is 10, 20, 30, 40 and so on. And then 100 to 1000, which is 100, 200, 300, you get the idea. Any response graph can be broken down into distinct areas. The white area on this graph is the no trip area. If the current is in the white area, then that is a normal situation and the device will not trip. Notice the shape of the blue line and the so-called knee halfway along. An overload current in the green area above the knee will cause the MCB to trip. And a fault current in the yellow area will also cause the device to operate. With BSEN 60898 breakers, we have B-type, C-type and D-type MCBs. The response graph for each is slightly different as shown here and can also be seen on pages 370, 371 and 372 of the regulations book. The distance along the bottom axis, the amps, is different for each type as is the position of the knee or instantaneous tripping point. The top of the curve however is the same for all types of a particular rating. Let's look at what happens when we turn the power on. Current starts to rush into the circuit. We will always get a current surge, large or small, at switch on. In this case, the inrush current reaches a peak but does not cross the blue line. And then it begins to settle down and return to normal operating levels. Because it always stayed within the boundaries of the response curve, the MCB did not trip. And this is a nicely balanced circuit. But what would happen if the inrush current was excessive? Let's go back to our busy office. The whole ceiling is full of fluorescent lights as far as the eye can see. A type B breaker is installed and we can see on the response curve that we have a problem. The current crosses the blue line at switch on. This is often caused by the transformers that are in all the lighting units. But the device does not know if this is just inrush current or a real fault. It just knows that the blue line has been crossed and so it trips. It disconnects the supply. If, and that is if, the customer can get the lights to come on, 
they are fine for the rest of the day because the current settles down into a steady state. But the office manager could do without the hassle every morning. Installing a Type-C breaker will move the curve to the right. The inrush current will stay the same, but now it starts to settle down before it crosses the line. That looks good, but we must consider some other things when changing from a B-type to a C-type. Making this change will halve the maximum permitted ZS for that circuit. We must be aware of this and the new ZS must be tested. Personally, I always check the circuit ZS before making the change. We have a Learn Electrics video on what to do if the ZS is above the permitted maximum and we will leave a link for this in the description to this video. Some people ask, why not fit type C or D for everything? And it is a question of balancing function against safety. The device, the MCB, must operate fast enough to protect persons and livestock during a fault, but not so quickly that the circuit is prone to nuisance tripping. We must have the right size breaker so that any high inrush currents do not cause nuisance tripping, but the device should still operate correctly before a short circuit can damage the circuit cables. What we want to do is to balance the overcurrent and fault protection so that we get the best performance for the attached appliances and equipment whilst still maintaining a safe and protected circuit. What are some of the differences between types B, C and D breakers? This chart shows the three types of the popular BSEN 60898 breaker. A B type breaker will have almost instantaneous operation if the fault current or inrush current exceeds five times the breaker rating. So a type B 10 amp breaker will operate when five times 10 or 50 amps of current is detected. A C type operates instantaneously at 10 times its normal rating and the D type at 20 times. The chart also shows how the maximum permitted ZS reduces as the breaker type becomes more robust to inrush currents. On this slide, we have listed some common usages of the different breaker types, B, C and D. We should always aim to have the correct size and type of breaker installed. Stable enough that we do not get nuisance tripping, but quick enough that the customer and the cables are safe from the dangers of electricity. And, of course, always check that the ZS is correct too, as that can affect the response of the MCB as well. Well, that's it. We hope that you have enjoyed this video and learnt a little more. Please click on subscribe below to have access to all of our videos and to be sure of not missing our next Tech Tips video. Subscribing also helps us too. Typing in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to all of our videos at any time. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.